Finally, C-SPAN spoke with Democrat Ed Case, who is representing Hawaii's first congressional district. He was born and raised in the state and previously represented its second congressional district from 2002 to 2007. Representative Case is the cousin of AOL co-founder Steve Case. Congressman, you are a freshman of the 116th Congress, but you have served before in the House. Tell our viewers when and for how long. Sure. Well, first of all, aloha. I'm Ed Case, proudly representing Hawaii's first congressional district, which is the city of Honolulu. Um, I actually served uh, in the House from 2002 to 2007, so I took a little bit of one term in a special election when the great Patsy Mink, my predecessor, uh, passed away unexpectedly. And that, then I went on to two full terms in the House. And so I've had that experience and then took a 12-year hiatus uh, back in Hawaii, not a bad gig, and then uh, somehow got lured back uh, to running for Congress again. So here I am again. And actually, this is my third tour of duty in Congress because I actually started, uh, like many members of Congress, as a summer intern. Uh, for the then uh, member from the 1st Congressional District of Hawaii, Spark Matsunaga, uh, worked uh, just steps away from where we're shooting this, as a matter of fact. So this is like coming home again. So I uh, was spent uh, three years uh, with him and then, and then uh, later on uh, came back to Congress. When you left after serving that, the, that first time here in Washington, why did you decide to leave? Well, I ran for the U.S. Senate. Like, uh, like many good U.S. House members, uh, you aspired to the U.S. Senate, and I ran, and, and I was not successful in that election. And so uh, I was involuntarily retired from the U.S. House, uh, went back to Hawaii, and uh, went back to my uh, job as a lawyer there and as a uh, hotel executive. And so I had a very, very productive uh, 12 years. Uh, but again, uh, politics and, and government uh, were still out there for me. And so when the opportunity came up to run again, it, it lured me back. How did it come about, this, this um, most I simply, recent tour? I simply did not like the direction of the country. I, I had a great uh, life, a uh, great job. I felt I felt I had left uh, government and politics behind. I had had uh, you know, a number of very full years in both the state legislature and in the U.S. Congress. I was very satisfied with my service. Uh, but I simply uh, felt that uh, things were deteriorating so fast. And I got involved with a group called uh, Issue One and uh, the Reformers Caucus, which is former members of Congress uh, and governors and cabinet members and ambassadors uh, who all had gotten together on a bipartisan basis uh, to say, hey, enough is enough, we've got to fix Washington. And so um, actually once I got involved with them, I guess it was a slippery slope. What has been the differences that you have seen since the first time you were here and now here in 2018, 2019? Well, a lot of it, of course, is very familiar. Again, as, as, as my third, third tour in Washington, um, you know, the rhythms are the same, the procedures are the same, uh, how you get things done is the same. You still have to develop relationships, you still have to uh, look for the opportunities, uh, you still have to kind of know how to navigate the system, and I feel fortunate uh, to have had that prior experience, and so that is all quite familiar. Um, what is obviously different is the partisanship, the divide. Uh, that was bad uh, when I was here previously, 02 to 07. Uh, but um, it's, it's gotten much worse in the, in the 12 years since, and so um, it is just much harder uh, today to find uh, that common ground, at least on the big issues. Um, on, on issues that, um, that are fairly nonpartisan and partisan to start with, um, we can still find that common ground. We're still passing legislation to support our veterans. You know, uh, we're still uh, behind our military. Those areas, for the most part, are not affected. But on the large-scale, uh, tough issues that our country faces, things like how to spend our money in the big picture, how to tax, um, you know, how to pay for health care, um, the, div the division is just so intense that it's, it's hard to find that uh, middle ground. And, and, and my belief is that uh, that middle ground is where the solutions are forged. You have one of the toughest commutes for a member of Congress. Tell our viewers what it's like for you to try to get back, <laughs> how long it takes, and how often you make that trip. Um, I make that trip just about the same as everybody else. Uh, so I do, in fact, uh, commute uh, back to Hawaii. I go back uh, for, you know, for the weekends where I can. Um, and sure, it's tough. Um, but when I start uh, feeling sorry for myself, I can think about the delegate from Guam or American Samoa or the, the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands. And actually, there are other members inside of Congress uh, who um, have tougher commutes to get home uh, even within the mainland uh, United States, sometimes they, you know, it takes them a long time to get to a particular airport and then they've got to drive quite a ways. Uh, when I arrive in Honolulu, I'm pretty much home. So uh, it's, about a, it's about a 12 hour uh, commute. Uh, and um, 
one thing that's good for me is that I can sleep fairly well on a plane. Uh, so at the end of a week when I'm going home, it really doesn't matter what time I'm getting on that plane. I can still pass out, and I do. And then coming back is always a red eye because otherwise you just lose an entire day. And so I, you know, I get what I can out of the red eye sleep, and then I get through my afternoon, and then I try to punch myself into the into the next week. Uh, but you know, no complaints. You grew up in Hawaii. What was life like? Um, I had a wonderful childhood. Um, I grew up in a small town called Hilo, Hawaii. Uh, it was not Honolulu. It was uh, it was a town of about twenty five thousand, and I often describe it as as um, as um, um, picturesque and quintessential uh, small town America, but it was Hawaii. Uh, it was an incredibly diverse uh, um, um, community that I grew up in. I was, you know, routinely the only Caucasian in my in my class in public school. Um, it was a um, uh, quite an outdoor upbringing. The ocean was there, uh, the mountains were there, the trails were there. Um, it had small town values, you know, you, you knew your neighbors. You, so I grew up in a small town. Uh, I just happened to grow up in Hawaii. And so I really feel that I had the best of all worlds in, in, my, in my upbringing. It was a fantastic upbringing. How did your family end up there? What did your parents do for a living? Um, my family actually has been there for since 1896. A little unusual. My story is a little unusual. My, my uh, great-grandparents uh, emigrated to Hawaii from uh, Kansas. Uh, this is on my father's side. And uh, uh, at the time, Hawaii was an independent country. And I think, um, I think really that they were looking for opportunity. Uh, they were looking for kind of a new life. And, and Hawaii was an up-and-coming country that uh, it looked like would become part of the United States. Uh, and I think that they were attracted to the, to, to the promise and the opportunity of Hawaii. Uh, and that was a long, long time ago. And of course, now they have, uh, now we're up into, I'm the fourth generation and we're, we're working on about the seventh generation at this point. So uh, that's a long uh, uh, group that has lived uh, throughout all of the ages of Hawaii. My, my great grandparents were prominent in their community on Maui. My grandparents were prominent in their community on Kauai. Uh, my dad uh, contributed to his community in Hilo and then Honolulu, and I've had a full life. And I've got a family around me uh, that is uh, uh, also accomplishing things um, in Hawaii. So I, I'm, uh, I, I feel, um, I, feel uh, I have that feeling of obligation, uh, both to my state and to my country, that uh, many of us in Congress have. Were your parents political? What did they do for, for a living? Uh, my father uh, was a lawyer. Uh, by trade, and um, he practiced uh, law for 63 years. He retired when he was 92 years old. Uh, my mother had seven children and found the time in the middle of all of that uh, to get a master's in library science, and so she was a school librarian, a children's librarian uh, by profession, and so that was uh, what they did. Uh, they weren't especially political. You know, uh, maybe this is unlike many, many other of my colleagues. I, I didn't grow up in a political household. In fact, I didn't have too much of a clue about politics. I was, you know, I was too busy enjoying growing up in Hawaii, and, and of course, uh, also uh, I, I went to school on the mainland uh, college on the mainland at Williams College in Massachusetts, and a great college and a great uh, college experience. But none of that had anything to do with politics. Uh, so um, for me, this politics stuff was really an accident. If you want to really be honest about it, I came down here as a summer intern, and the only reason I came here as a summer intern was. I was looking for a way to kill a summer while I, right after I graduated from college while I figured out what to do with the rest of my life. And, and uh, that turned into 44 years and counting. Uh, so, um, you know, the opportunity uh, that I saw and, the, and really the, the meaning that I saw and the passion that I felt uh, when I came in to work in Congress as a summer intern at 22 years old has stayed with me ever since. But it wasn't there before 22, so that was... That was a bit of an accident, but I'm very happy for the accident. What would you say, the, what, what, what impact did your parents have on you? What values, principles <clears throat> did they instill in you that you carry with you today in this work? Well, you know, the one thing my parents uh, uh, gave all of us children, and we all had contributory uh, careers, so I'm really, really proud of my family and my extended family too, because, you know, the, the life I've lived is also reflected in, you know, my cousins and my second cousins and, you know, our, our second cousins once removed and twice removed. I think we've all, uh, we were all raised uh, to feel a sense of obligation back to our community. Um, and um, my parents modeled that uh, because as they, 
you know, grew up and raised seven kids and, and, and basically tried to make a living for everybody, they were also giving back to their community. So they were active in their, in their uh, um, you know, local organizations. Uh, one, of, one, of our, uh, one of my siblings was very, very sick, uh, very early in life, and, and my parents uh, turned to, to uh, support uh, his particular you know, illness and, and children like him uh, who had nowhere to go in terms of help. Uh, by setting up a community organization and by changing state laws uh, to, to recognize that children like uh, my, my brother needed help. And so, um, <clears throat> although I didn't grow up in, a, in, a, in, a, in an atmosphere of, you know, you must do this and you must do that, I grew up in an atmosphere of it's all around you, that, you know, life is not just about, you know, getting out of college and getting a job and making as much money as you can and living in the nicest house you can and, you know, having all of the, you know, the, the accoutrements of, of life. That's not the end of life. Uh, life is about uh, finding something that you're passionate about, that, you're meaning, that you consider meaningful, and that will give back. And so, you know, I've seen that <clears throat> for me, that path was politics and government. Uh, for my sister, for example, uh, she is the, um, the head of the uh, Hawaii State Department of Land and Natural Resources, responsible for administering all of the public lands of Hawaii. And she's been passionate about the environment and natural resources all of her life. Um, and, you know, I've got other relatives that have been passionate about, you know, Steve Case, my, my cousin is passionate about entrepreneurship. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we have all taken that from our parents and their parents and their parents. And so I'm, I, I feel very fortunate uh, that, um, you know, the path is not always an easy one, um, but I feel fortunate that that was ingrained into me because Frankly, um, it's, it's, it's made for a, you know, a much better life and I've been able to help a lot of people.